Hi, this is Stephanie Kwame. Your drawing should look a little bit like this when you bring it up, and this is a continuation of the cabin, uh, introduction to the cabin program, and we are in exercise two, which is interior walls. You should have done a bubble diagram to show how you want the cabin spacing to be, and today we're going to talk about interior walls and what you can do to edit and clean them up so that you can put in the walls that you want to put in. First off, though, I want to just mention one thing. We have a lot of new users that accidentally do things like that, turn off their navigator or their toolbars. If you turn off something by accident, go to Window, and then go to, like, Palettes, and right there's a navigator, turn it back on. So you can, if you lose something, the window is the key there. Also, we don't want to be work. Uh, the dimensions are in our way, so we've got the arrow on, which is Edit, select a dimension, right click, and we're going to say layer, and it, this will hide all layers that are dimension, that all the dimensions in that layer. So it really hides the entire layer, and that's a quick way to do that. Okay, let's go on to walls. If we click it once, we get this info box, but if we do it twice, then we get the details, and we definitely want the details. And uh, we need to look down on the list of walls, and you can make your own custom walls, but we don't know how to do that yet, so we're going to pick a 2 by 4 interior wall. And one other little thing to do is to come down here, arrow over, and we were on external, and you want to make sure you select a wall internal and say OK. Let's say you want to separate this little area here. We've got the wall on, we're ready to rock and roll. When we see that check, we're attached, we head on out. We don't know how far, so we're just going to follow the, the uh, guidelines. Click here, and then right click and say OK to cut it off. Let's say that we want to start right here and intersect that. So we get the check mark, but we're on the wrong side. The dark uh, side is always the outside. So we want to change that outside face to be inside faced. So there we go. And we uh, come down here, we'll right click, and we're going to say OK. Now, <clears throat> we want this space, but we don't like these little walls hanging out here, so we need to do some editing. Anytime we need to change something, we go to the arrow, we select one wall, and to add something to your selection set, hold down the shift key and select. And you can select as many things as you want. Right now what we need to do are one of these tools. They highlight only if you're in the edit mode and we want to intersect and that cleans up that wall. Now you can either pick in the middle of nowhere or do an escape key because you don't want them to stay highlighted or the program thinks you want to work with them. Now let's come down here and we'll go ahead and let's go back to wall. We'll come from here, go over to here, right click, say OK. And now I want to put a big opening in there. You come in and there's some sort of a, a little area there and uh, we want to have a big opening. So we go to door and door is where you find the openings. So we're going to go opening and we'll do an arch and because I come from the southwest, I'm going to make mine 10 feet wide and 7 feet tall because I know some tall people. And I don't, want the, I don't want them to come to the cabin and not hurt their head. I'm going in the midpoint again. Whoops. Let's go for the midpoint. I had, I'll show you what we did, what I had. I had the setting here for a uh, measure from the end point instead of the midpoint of that. So now we should be able to measure there. It doesn't matter which way we go because it's just an opening. Let's see how this looks. I go to general perspective and notice how easy that is to see with this wire frame looking outside walls. I did that by going to control L for layer and see this that means wireframe or solid. So if I put it back to solid, it's not quite as interesting when I'm doing my interior work. So I'm going to do Control L again and make that wireframe so I can kind of look at it while I'm doing it to see how it's going to look. Let's go back to the first floor and get a little bit more work done. Let's go back to wall and let's come off of this wall. And as I come off, aha! my dark sides on the inside that's not right so what do I do I need to change the facing 
to be outside and that looks very nice I'm gonna come down I'm gonna say 10 and enter and then I need to end the line right click and say OK and there I've got my wall and now let's say that I want to put a door in here but I want it to be one foot off of a, a the endpoint so I select a door and right here we have showing that this is X and this is Y the Y direction and you can actually enter data with a accurately with X and Y now if you don't get this right now it's okay because we have uh, tutorials on it but it's an interesting way and a lot of people uh, that operate the program prefer that so I'm gonna say I, I want to put in a door and we need an interior door so I'm going to, I love wood so I'm going to do this wood interior door but I'm changing the measure from the middle to the endpoint and I want to put it its endpoint from there in an X position of plus one in the plus direction and enter and that is the point right there and then you can put your swing wherever you want it so that's another way to do uh, entering of data now let's do one that's going down in the negative direction let's put a door from let's say this endpoint down in an, at let's say six feet in a negative so but that is that's why isn't it so we have our checkpoint so we're measuring it from something whatever we can put a little checkpoint on I'm putting in Y I'm gonna do minus because I'm going in the negative direction six in the plus enter and there it is and when you measure a door it may it may it takes into consideration it goes to the the swing here but if I take a measure tool here and I take it from here to there at six feet so you can see that that works very nicely one other thing is if I take the arrow for editing and I select this wall and I hit the delete key what do you think is going to happen everything goes and the reason it is is it's an intelligent database and it's so smart that it knew that door went with that wall so it's not just going to leave the uh, a door as an open orphan in the middle of nowhere because it knows it belongs there and that's one of the advantages of the building information model well there's some few exercises awaiting you to go through some tutorials and then I want you to start working on your interior walls and our next uh, lesson is going to be exciting because then we can put in the objects like uh, the sofas and the beds that make it so interesting so until then thank you for listening